All right, welcome to our recap for Monday, October 9th. And we had some great action today, caught some great trades, was able to hit all our goals on all our accounts. <laughs> so good day, good day for a Monday. Before we jump into the charts, make sure you hit that subscribe button, support the channel. We really, really appreciate that so we can continue creating more content around Renko Momentum Trading. So let's jump right into the price action. So a couple of things to note. Overnight, we had this big gap down. And so, you know, we were looking at it and we're wondering, hey, are they going to fill the gap? You know, obviously that's something that you usually see happen. But I also don't like to fall uh, for, for the trap of group thinking, you know, just because everybody is thinking one thing, you don't want to necessarily have that same mindset, right? A lot of times market will do exactly the opposite. And so anyhow, just looking at the structure, we knew we were obviously bullish after uh, Friday NFP big run up. And uh, what I had here was my FIBS and different liquid liquidity levels that I was watching for. So I was expecting some type of pullback, you know, maybe a deeper pullback or something like that, but we didn't quite get it. So pre-market, they were consolidating, as you can see, on my 32 bar chart. And then they started rotating, creating this range. So we took a couple of different trades and I'll kind of outline the ones that I took as well as, well as the ones that, you know, obviously uh, are worth talking about. I did take some paper cuts and whatnot, but in the end, we ended up netting over 270 ticks on the day. Uh, and that's for a couple of accounts and some other accounts. We actually did even better than that. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the price action and we'll kind of outline the logic in terms of why we took the trades that we took. So coming into the open, if you look on my 16 bar chart here in the middle, you'll notice we're in this narrow range. And we also were respecting Super Trend 3 and our 200 SMA, okay? So price comes up and at the open we reject and we get a nice sell off, right? Price drops and we find support and the support comes in at a level where we had this trend line that had been mapped by one of my tools, which is pretty awesome. And so that was the first move down, right? And we actually were able to participate in that trade. So let me go ahead and see if I can pull that up right here. You'll see my entry. Let me zoom into it here on the chart. And I, I didn't actually take a screenshot of the trade. I was kind of just focused on trading. So, um, but you'll see my entry came in. Uh, looks like the price level was at 14,981. And we got uh, wicked out here on our trail at 15,024. So about 160 ticks on that first trade. Called it out live in our room. Actually, it's 179 ticks. So basically 180 ticks. So we called that out. Was able to ride that little move up. And um, from there, we went sidelines. Prior to that, we did go short. We did try to get short and ended up getting tagged out, tagged out, break even on it, and missed the initial sell off at the open. Uh, but that's perfectly fine. You know, the, the reality is I had a, a, a prefer I prefer to be long uh, just because of the 32 price, 32 bar price action, right? So I want to be in line with that momentum. So that first trade was long off yellow, caught a nice little 179 tick. Uh, profit and then price goes in and continues pushing up and eventually what they end up doing is creating this type of uh, wedge here at the high and this is something I was telling the room you know whenever you see a wedge form usually what they'll do is they'll liquidate they'll liquidate that wedge at the low and then eventually come back and swipe the high right so I've seen these patterns for years um, how they play it so you got the little wedge formation here on the 16 bar okay and then they got everyone thinking long, and then what do they do? Boom, they liquidate, right? So everyone then goes short, <laughs> thinking that we're going to get a big sell-off. And, uh, you know, obviously we didn't, we didn't do that. We knew a little better than that. Price comes back down and actually pulls back to our 200 SMA. So they kind of trap below. And I also had a fib drawn there too. And I believe it came right into our golden zone. It sure did, our 618 fib. So I believe we started looking for longs here. Yep, you'll see I got long right here at 15,029. Not the best entry, but it was kind of a trifecta play. Missed the first one, right? Didn't really like the first entry on eight just because there was no con confirmation, right? It was just the first first leg up, first pullback. So I preferred the second one. So we had leg one, two, three, four. So I was able to ride leg four to leg five, right? Took some here, added some more, took some there. And then I flipped short and caught a nice little sell off uh, once we got to our orange lug level. Right, so you'll see I kind of flipped short here. Price dropped, came back, took some profits, then added back again on this trifecta play, and then caught it down here. Um, and the entry for that was fifteen thousand thirty-one, and the exit was at fifteen thousand six. That was a pretty decent short play. Now you might be saying, "Well, didn't you say you just wanted to be long?" Well, yeah, but I also understand the importance of ro rotation, right? And the fact is, we were rotating up until that point because we had this range here. And I was expecting price to pretty much just do that today, just 
you know, fail breakouts, fail breakout to the low, fail breakout to the high, right? And that's what we were anticipating. And then eventually what happens is we get that sell off and price continues to push down. So you have a one leg, two leg, three leg, right? But one thing I called out in the VIP, I was like, hey, our, our anchor leg is still this swing low and this swing high, right? So even though we had a lower high and a lower low print, we're not bearish till we take out this swing low at 14,949. So that's what I'll explain to the room. And what I also mentioned was the fact that they printed this lower high after they did this wedge. You know, the thing about wedges, they always want to liquidate this high. So what I had mentioned in the room was I said, they're probably going to save it for later. <laughs> Not realizing that later was like 30 minutes later, right? So we get that second leg down and you notice they did another wedge formation here too, right? Or three drives pattern right here. And where, where do they take it? They take it right into our golden zone, our 786 fib. And more importantly, our yellow lug level. So you'll see we're kind of playing around in here, taking some trades, whatever. But the trade that actually mattered, and I was actually trying to go long already off the 786. Um, actually, the 618, it didn't work out. Then I went long again. And then finally, was able to catch it right here, the entry right at the uh, yellow Ludwig level, and was able to catch a nice little 200 tick or so. Let me see how many ticks that was here from the entries that we had. We got it right around yellow, and that yeah, was actually a little shy of 200 ticks. So 174 ticks on that trade right there. But I did it with two contracts, so I took a partial off uh, right here at Trifecta and then held the rest and trailed up. Should have continued holding, but it was all good, right? That move right there, happy with that. And then obviously we had the big rip up, and um, you know eventually the 16 bar confirmed up. So if you looked at the 16 only, you would have gotten in. So the point, so the starting point was 11:13 a.m. The entry on 16 did not come in until 103. So you'd have to wait like two hours before you get that confirmation. So this is where you, if you once you have the experience trading the smaller bar period, you know, you don't necessarily need to wait for the 16 to confirm. Why? Because we understand we're bullish on 32. So we want to be looking for long opportunities. So as soon as we got that trend line shift here, right, we had that break of structure, you could immediately, you know, if you didn't feel confident buying off the yellow lug level. You could begin to immediately start buying as they start taking out trifecta, right? As soon as they break trifecta one, two, 50 SMA, you see it go from red to green. Then we break trifecta three or super trend three. Boom, there you go, right? And then you get the first pullback. You could have entered that there again. I actually did take that trade as well on a different account. Uh, and that was it, right? And then price eventually pulls back, you know, at 103. And then you get that trifecta play here on eight. You can also see it set up here pretty clean, right? You know me and my trend lines. So we get the little bull flag formation. We get the break of structure. Price then does what? Holds trifecta. They try multiple times. And I'm pretty sure if we're watching the tape, you probably see, you know, uh, sellers trying real hard and then they're just getting soaked up <laughs> and absorbed by buyers. Uh, and then eventually, boom, we get the we get the rip, right? And then once you start seeing trifecta open up like this, that's it. It's good, good, goodbye, right? Goodbye. And um, at the end here, started playing around, scalping around, got a little... Caught up here, a little chopped up, but that was fine. Ended up catching the move I was looking for. I was expecting a, a move back up. So ended up um, taking a trade here, and then I scalped <laughs> at the end of the day uh, 11 contracts for just a nice little quick $600 profit on that. So that was it. That was the day. You know, it was a pretty straightforward day. I think really it was either A, you caught the, you caught the, the move based on the level entry, right? So the levels being our golden zone. So you get the move up. Pull back to 786, right? Um, the other scenario would have been you would have took the trade here. In fact, let me just make it easy for everybody. I'm going to um, clean up the charts here real quick and, and just show you exactly where I think the best entries would have been today. And the reason why I do that is so that it can help people moving forward. So that way, you know, tomorrow when you're looking at this stuff, you'll be able to start recognizing, oh, yeah, those are the entries Max talked about. Okay, so when, the first entry I would have been looking at, you know, obviously we had the market open. But we look for a fail breakout here, right? So you have this trend line here. You got Super Trend 3. They they popped it and dropped it. So that would have been like the first opportunity. I would have got short right here on the breakdown. And I actually did attempt that, but it gets I got wicked out there on that rev out bar. The next trade would have been on yellow, right? So watching how they handled this demand zone, right? This broke. They broke the structure, but then they reclaimed the structure. So it's very important. Just because they break a structure doesn't necessarily mean like, okay, that's it. We're going to go ahead and sell it right off a of retest. You got to allow price to reject first. But notice how they what they did here. Price did not reject. They reclaimed, right? They reclaimed that level. Let me actually just get my little tool here real quick so we can map it out here so you can see what I mean. 
So you'll see here, they broke the level, right? Which they do this all the time. They came to a lower trend line and then eventually, boom, broke back in. This is called the Bobby. Break out, break back in. Then you get that rev out bar right at trifecta. And so you could have got long on this breakout, break back in. If you were on eight, you would have seen a trifecta set, set up. So that would have been trade number two, right? A Bobby play. The next trade would have been a failed breakout, right? The failed breakout for me is you see all this liquidity that was generated. We have all these lower highs that have been intact, right? So you had this swing high, this swing high, equal highs, this high, and then you had the gap. Price comes into the level and notice how they come into the level. They don't come in a straight line. They give us a three drives pattern. So typically after a three drives pattern, they're going to give us a deep pullback. So that would have been the second uh, or the third opportunity. You wait for that third try and fail. Boom, hit it short. Okay. And then you could have got long on that pullback and reclaim of the 200 SMA, right? So as soon as they start breaking below, you wait for them to purge and revert. Boom, they reclaim it, get long, right? And then there you could have also got long if you missed that on that pullback to trifecta right here for a second leg up. You'd be taking your profits at the orange lug level, right? And then trailing the rest. And here you would have got stopped out if you're trading multiple contracts. So the first contract would have made money. Second contract, you would have got stopped out in that trail. And then what? Okay, well, this is where I started getting short, right? So we had another uh, trend line support level get taken out. Boom. So we had price come up and then start breaking down. So we started looking for shorts up here. We got in a little early based off the rejection of orange. So you could have got short on this rev bar or the reversal bar two or three. Okay. You could have added some more on a rev out bar, bar six. And then you could have added again on the pullback to trifecta right here, which we did participate in all of this. Okay. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades right there. And then you had the main trade of the day, right? Which came in at 1136 when we got right off yellow. And that is that was the best that was the best entry that was the best trade and this came off the seven eight six so you always want to remember focusing on the anchor leg don't get caught up with all the noise in the middle so this was the move we had it mapped out on our chart we called it out in the room boom unfortunately I had actually signed off right and then I ended up catching the trade because it played it started uh, opening up as soon as I signed off but the room had already known that I was looking for this level and looking for a long I had taken attempt to, uh, one attempt or two attempts and got caught up. But it's okay because I ended up catching it and boom, two contracts and took it up for 170 ticks. No problem. So that would have been the next trade. And then the next opportunity to get in would have been on this uh, rev trap, reversal trap here. Could have bought that next follow through bar right there. The other play would have been the trifecta set up on 16. That would have paid huge. And honestly, that was pretty much it. Like you could have bought up here, but I, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of buying, um, you know, when we're that high up, you know, we, we basically were at the 100% extension of the initial balance. So, so not really interested in that. This was a high probability pullback because we had broken the IB on 16, came back and, and basically they were consolidating right there. We also had our super trend one and two, and then they immediately reclaimed the IB high and then bam, got the signal ready to go. So that was probably the best setup. The safest, most conservative setup would have been the long, at 115, um, although you know there was obviously tons of opportunities, you know, so just depending on how much time you had to be in front of your charts today would determine whether or not you caught, you know, certain moves or not. Uh, but in the end, it all worked out quite well. Pretty, pretty uh, happy about the results overall for today, and the price action is a little slow, in my opinion. Um, but it's okay for a Monday, considering we had so much news and so many things going on over the weekend. It's kind of uncertain going into the market what we would what we would get, but it was a great day. We made quite a bit of money today, um, you know, hit all our financial goals. And that's always good to do on a Monday. You know, we want to try to uh, A, either be profitable on a Monday or B, uh, have a small red day, right? We don't want to, you know, have a big red day on a Monday because that's just, ne that would create negative momentum going into the weekend. If you know anything about me and, how, and what I try to accomplish as a trader is I try to really utilize um, reinforcement mentally. Um, in order for me to get that, uh, kind of build that winning streak going into the into the trading week. So if I can have a green day or small red day or whatever on a Monday, Tuesday, you know, Wednesday, Thursday are usually a lot easier, right? And so that way we can really begin to start sizing up and uh, start take, being a little bit more aggressive. Now that we're actually past, you know, the NFP week, you know, we should start seeing things open up here. Plus the weekly chart, we're now breaking out to the high. So I'm excited. <laughs> Let's see if we can catch some super trends this week. So Hope that helps. Take care, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. If you are looking to jump into VIP and trade with me every day, uh, consider checking it out. You'll see a link there uh, below. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. You guys take care.